Our praises are beautiful before the Lord. Our praises and our prayer as we worship Him and praise and prayer comes up before Him. As incense, it comes before His throne. <laughs> He's capturing every bit of it. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. The prayers of the saints. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Our prayers change the atmosphere of the earth. As we worship Him, the atmosphere is captivated by our prayer and by our praise. Hallelujah. And it changes. It changes us. It changes the people next to us. It changes the people all around us. It changes the people in our cities. It changes the people in our nation. As we give ourselves to worshiping and praising Him and seeking Him with all of our heart, it brings the change that is needed. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we cry holy, 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 holy. Holy is the Lord God. Oh, He's holy. Oh. Uh, you get raptured up and He's holy. And you understand how the angels cry night and day before His throne. That's all they do. Just night and day. Holy. Holy. He's holy. He's holy. He's righteous, He's pure, He's true, He's faithful. Oh, and completely saying it is He's holy. <laughs> Woo, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you, Lord. And mighty is your name. Lord, there's none like you. Woo, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Not one of us want to give the rocks a chance to cry out. <laughs> oh, we want, we want to pour ourselves out on worshiping Him. Oh, kiatatai, zupar. If you feel like. If you feel like the Lord's not right there near you, if you don't feel His presence, just worship Him with all of your heart. Pour yourself out on Him. Oh, oh, hallelujah. But I tell you, He's there when we whisper His name. He's there when we just whisper His name. He's there when we begin to thank and dwell upon Him. When we, when we turn our thoughts upon Him, He's right there. He's rejoicing over us. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you love us so much. Oh, Father, thank you that you love us so much. Lord, we worship you. We praise you. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Oh, Father, I just thank you that you turn every heart in this place to you. Father, with everything that's within each person, Father, they're turned to you. Father, and they're changed by your precious Holy Spirit tonight to go deeper into the realms of your glory, to behold you, to see you. Father, to press in for visions and dreams, to press in for revelation and knowledge in you, to press in to behold you and to know you. in all of your glory, in all of your fullness, Father. Not to be satisfied. Let not, let not one of us be satisfied until, oh God, we walk in the fullness, in the full measure of the Holy Spirit that you have purchased us through the blood of Jesus Christ to be able to walk in that full measure of the Holy Spirit. Oh Lord, let our hearts pant after you, Lord, as the deer panteth for the water. Let our hearts pant after you, so desperately desire you, Lord, and none other and nothing else. Oh, God, let not the cares and the pleasures of this world turn our heads and turn our thoughts away from you for a moment, oh, God. Let not even the busyness of ministry and trying to get things done in the kingdom turn our hearts from you, oh, God. 
Oh Lord, let us search and run after our first love every moment. Lord, and kindle the flame and kindle the fire continually, oh God. So be a riki tia to to ya shundeli ya kata ya to kom de di ya satai. O raba bebe ya kata de rosu to. Badi ya kato raba kishko to de naba. Father, baptize every person in this place right now with the fresh fire of the Holy Ghost. Lord, as they surrender up themselves to you, and even some repent of the sin that they've allowed, and surrender themselves to you, O oh God, and say, I'm desperate for you. Father, fresh fire, fresh fire, the Holy Ghost. Right now, O oh God. Bekindia to Chishkata, Ratatia Kumamando, Roshi Ketera Lala Masoto, Brieti Tiatitiando Kumamamenzete, Brocotora, Zenda Lala Bacucela, Sukia Tianda. Oh Father, let your word go forth and pierce our hearts, dividing asunder the soul and the spirit and the joint and the mire. Go deep on the inside of us, Father. Bring the change, oh God. Bring the change, oh God. Bring the change, oh Father, for us to walk, Father, and seek after those deeper depths, those higher heights. Oh, kiatai, ikushkele lalamoshuta lala. Let your glory be seen and let your glory be revealed. Oh God, we want to see your glory. Lord, we want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. We want to behold you in this earth today as it was in the days of old. Father, as it was in the time that Jesus walked upon the earth and the glory was revealed, oh God, we want to see your glory like that, oh Father, like it was in the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon your people and the glory of God was revealed as the Holy Ghost was poured out. Oh, Father, we want to see your glory. Revive us, oh God. Revival in the land, oh God. Revival in our hearts, oh God. Revival in this place, oh God. Revival among your people, oh God. Oh, Father, a revival of the Holy Ghost and fire, revival of the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. The fire of heaven, hallelujah. Siatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiatiati
and fulfills all of God's working power on the inside of us. He is the living power, the overcoming power. Through the Spirit, through the Spirit, through the Spirit, we have access into the realms of glory. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. 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 And I want to see revival like was on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> oh, they come running to see the shout and the glory and every man speaking. And all the different languages that were represented there that day. Glorifying God, speaking in languages that they did not know what they were saying, but the people around them knew what they were saying because they were, glor they were speaking in their language glorifying God. Oh, hallelujah, 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 revival, revival fire. I am so desperately hungry for revival. I'm so desperately hungry for in this place. We have the word, and, and in revival, in revival, when you look and you see revival, the most important thing you look to see is, is the word being preached. I don't care who's shaking on the floor or fly, sh flying from the chandeliers or, or jumping over the seats or taking a lap around. That's all good. The Holy Spirit gets a hold of you and sometimes you just, you, you know, you're full of electricity and you, you just can't. It's like you just stuck your hand in, in, in a socket and you got the jitters real quick. And anybody ever get electrocuted? I've gotten electrocuted pretty good. And... Uh, it will do something to your body. Well, the Holy Spirit is much greater than electricity. That, le that electricity, it all comes from Him. It all comes from the Father. It all comes from the light of the, of the world. And that electricity is just a little tad of His glory. We can't even stand and look at His glory. We can't, we, we, our, our, our body would be consumed by the light of his glory, that electricity that comes off of him. So when he touches us, you can get a little excited. But it, it doesn't matter whether that's happening or not, but it matters is the word of God being preached. Is it going forth? Is it piercing the heart? Is it changing the heart? Is there coming change? Are people taking a hold of the word of God and living it? That's revival. That's revival. That's revival when people allow the word. And we've got the word preached in here from Genesis to Revelation all the way to the last chapter from the beginning to the end. But it's when the people are hungry and desperate for God and they take it and they live it. They take it in their heart. They live it. They walk it out. They won't allow anything to come to try to steal the seed of the Word of God that's planted. They won't let the bright sun the next day with the cares and riches and pleasures of this world come and burn up that seed that was sown into their heart. But they take a hold of that seed and they're carefully watering it. <laughs> and they're carefully taking care of it <laughs> through pursuing the Word and pursuing the Spirit. Revival. Revival, acting upon revival. I've been, um, David and I have been looking at revivals from every revival in the past to just anything we, we, we can see, we can find on revival. Just we're, we're desperate because we know, we know we're in revival. You take us to another church, <laughs> and, and I mean, we're in revival. But there's a depth of revival that God is going to bring here. And, it, and it's that obedience to the Word. It's that pursuing the Word. It's that allowing the Word of God to go deep to where you live it out you walk it. It is who you are. And then it multiplies through the earth. Right now people are caught up in the church and around the world, they're caught up in so many deceptions. They're caught up in their life. They have a little Jesus, and, and there's so much, there's so much. I heard somebody say the other day that 
You know, no sin can take you to hell. And, and, and they're, you know, they're just smiling and preaching Jesus and the love of Jesus, but sin, no sin can take you to hell. Well, I, I wanted to say, excuse me, but all sin could take you to hell, except they were on TV, so I couldn't talk back. They're on YouTube. And I couldn't talk back to them. All sin will take you to hell. But so many people are caught up in so many doctrines of demons, and that's a doctrine of demons when it's contrary to the Word of God. It's a doctrine of demons. Because what, what, did, what did sin always lead the people of Israel into? What always, what, what always got them in trouble was sin. Going further and further away from God until God had to bring judgment. That's what always got them in trouble with God. And I was looking at, at Hezekiah. Hezekiah is one of my um, favorite kings in the Old Testament. Because it's said of him that he followed the Lord. He did that which was right in, in the sight of the Lord. And no other king before him walked like him. And no other king after him walked like him. He followed after the Lord with all of his heart. He was passionately seeking after God. And he had revival in his day. I, you know, and, and that's another part about Hezekiah is because he turned the hearts of the people towards God. Revival. His, his father and his grandfathers and all the ancestors before him, so many of them had led the people astray and led them in bondage and had taken out the holy things out of the temple of God and boarded up the temple and didn't even have, have sacrifice and worship anymore. They didn't even seek after God. They built high places. Everything that God told them not to do, they did. And they went and they bowed down to, to idols of clay and of, of wood. And they burnt incense to them. And they went after every evil, ungodly thing. But when Hezekiah, at the age of 25 years old, became king, he began to clean up the house of God. He said, let's repair the house of God. We're going to go in. We're going to repair the house of God. Let's repair the vessels. And he, and he pressed in and he told the Levites, he said, now you sanctify yourself. You get ready. You get ready. You get ready. You get ready. We're getting ready to have revival. You sanctify yourself. You separate yourself unto the Lord. And they pursued after God and they sanctified themselves. And, and, and Hezekiah prepared to have a sacrifice, a Passover Oh, hallelujah. And to sacrifice to the Lord. And they sacrificed to the Lord. And then they, with rejoicing, you know, they repented. They saw all the things that they were doing that was wrong. And they repented. And they came and they began to sacrifice with joy and rejoicing. Not with sadness and sorrow. And they had been in a lot of ungodliness. And, but yet, they got the repenting done and they moved on. Just repent, move on, go into the rejoicing and joy, <laughs> not the sorrow and the sadness. And then Hezekiah, he says, we're sending, we're sending out letters to Ephraim and Manassas and, and all of Israel. We're, we're, we're inviting them all to come to Jerusalem. We've, re, we've restored the temple. Come to the temple. Come and let's make sacrifice. Let's have revival. Let's, let's press in to know our God. And he went out and he sent all these letters and they, and they, they sent them all out and, and a lot of them scoffed and mocked and laughed. When revival comes, there'll be scoffers, mockers, and laughter. Or should I say, as revival increases. Because I, you know, we're the, the word is preached like it's preached here. There's revival. Amen. There's revival. Where there's change, where people's hearts are, are steadfast to walk with God in purity, holiness, and righteousness, there's revival. Amen. There's not a lot of people jumping on board because they're caught up in this life and they want to live it out the way they want to live it out right now. But don't worry. God, in His goodness and in His mercy, He will bring, He will bring this nation to repentance. He will bring the nations of the world to repentance. They'll be jumping on board, especially because we'll have food and they don't have any. But, I mean, that'll be one reason. 
But uh, revival, 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 it's here and it's coming massively. We're going to see people turn to Jesus. That's another, that's the big thing, repentance. <laughs> big thing, repentance. And so a lot of them laughed at him, mocked him. But many came, Manassas and, and, and many of the other tribes came to the Passover and revival fire was started. And I mean, so much about Hezekiah, we could just go on and on about what God did and how God brought revival through a man, that one man that would seek after God. Of course, he was king. But one man that would seek after God and turn the hearts of the people back to him. And then you look at Josiah. Josiah, he was another great revival leader. He started, he started ruling Israel, uh, Judah when he was eight years old. Jerusalem. He started ruling when he was eight years old. By the time he was 18 years old, in his, well, in his 18th year, he was seeking after the Lord. And he began to prepare the temple and clean up the temple and get the temple ready for sacrifice and, and to serve the Lord because he wanted to bring revival. And as they're taking care of the things in the temple, they find the book of the law and they bring it to Josiah. And they begin to read it to him. The priest begins to read it to him and he rends his clothes. He rent his garment and just bowed before the Lord. And he, he sent for the prophet at that time, which was a woman. Believe it or not, a woman prophet in Israel. That is surprising. There's, been, there, there's more than one too. But he sent to her. And she, she spoke the word of the Lord and she said, she, she, brought, she told the judgment of God that was going to be on Israel and on Judah because of their sins and because of their iniquities. But, he, but she said, because of your heart, Josiah, because when you heard my word, you rent your clothes, because you sought after me, because your heart was after me, I will not do it in your day. I will not bring the judgment. And so Josiah, he goes out and he begins to clean up the place. He tears down the altars. He digs up the, the bones of the prophets that prophesied lies. He, he has them burnt and then he grinds them into powder. It's not enough that they were just burnt. He grinds them into powder. I mean, he is a valiant revival leader. He's valiant. He goes after it. One of the first things he does is he goes and he wipes down all of the sodomites cleans that mess up. Hallelujah. And I'm on YouTube. And he just takes care. And that's homosexuals, if you don't know. That thing that God hates, he despises. That immorality. Men burning in lust. One for another. That ungodliness. There can never be a marriage. Marriage was instituted by God. He created one man for one woman. And that is called a marriage. And anything else you try to do is not called a marriage. I don't care what kind of piece of paper you want to have. It is not a marriage because there's only marriage in the eyes of God. There's only joining together in the eyes of God with one man and one woman. And there is no other way for there to be a marriage. Everything else is a lie. It's damnable. You're of your father, the devil, and you're on your way to hell. And I will preach it on the streets with the loud microphone because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of his word. His word is truth, and the biggest problem in this world today is so many people have erred from the truth. They've turned from the truth of the word of God, and they're following their own pernicious ways. And then Christians stand up and begin to follow along with them because they don't know the word of God. They've sat under somebody that was just reading somebody else's Sunday school lesson and the Sunday school lesson was incorrect, and if they would have lined it up with the Word of God, they would have found out that they were talking about lies. They were just talking about man's ideas. 
Well, man's ideas are one thing, but damnable doctrines, doctrines of demons will take you to hell. And I don't care what church you sit in. They will take you to hell. They believed a lie and were damned. Reprobates. We want to make sure that everybody in this place clearly knows the Word of God. Amen. It's damnable. It's reprobate. It's believing a lie and being damned. You don't want to be taken over by deception because deception will take you over to hell as quick as Satan can get you there. And especially if you have heard and known to an extent, the ways of God. If you set where the word is preached and then you begin to play with rebellion. See, rebellion is the seed. Rebellion is the seed that gets in people. See, it's so strong in the United States of America and in the countries of the world today. You know, the freedom. I, I'm almost wondering if dictatorship isn't better because people get in that free mode and nobody can tell me what to do. I mean, I don't want dictatorship, but that, you know, I thank God for the freedom to worship God. But I like how a righteous king rules. I definitely do like that. But that freedom of nobody's going to tell me what to do, and then that, there's that seed of rebellion. We come to God and we hold nothing back. We don't hold a seed of rebellion. And when the man of God stands in the office of speaking on the behalf of God. You better be careful what you let run through your mind in disagreements. Lest you, lest happily you be found to try to overthrow God. Happily you be found, and I'm quoting Acts chapter 5, where the one Pharisee came to try to, was used of God to deliver Peter and John, and he told, he told the Pharisees, if it's not of God, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to go away anyway. And if it is of God, then you can be found to try to fight God yourself. See, you want to be careful when we handle the things of God. We're playing on holy ground. We don't want to be playing. We want to be serious on holy ground. We want to rejoice with all gladness and joy, but we want to gird up the loins of our mind. We want to realize where we're at. We want to have a holy reverence of where we're at and what we're allowing the enemy to whisper into our, our spirits. And you'll only hook up with it if you've allowed that seed of rebellion. You want to make sure, oh God, there's no rebellious, there's no rebellious thought in me. Lord, I don't, I don't know everything, but I surrender everything. I surrender everything. And Pastor Mark... Our pastor continually tells you, don't listen to me. Open the Bible. I want to hear the rattling of the pages. You study, you study out this word. You know the word. And if you've got anything in the word that you know, that you feel like that he's not saying right, you come to him and he, he'll be glad to sit down with you with the word. But not fables. He's not going to argue with you about a fable. It's got to be the word of God. Not a bright idea. It's got to be the written Word of God. Let's turn over into uh, to, um, 2 John. I rejoice, and I'm getting there quickly. 2 John, and there's no chapters, in case anybody doesn't know. I rejoice greatly in verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found my children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. Now I beseech you, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love. And this is love. Now look at what love is. And this is love. That you walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. This is love that you walk after, His commandments. Jesus said in John chapter 14, 
if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He says in, in John chapter 14, verse 21, He that hath my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself to him. You say you love God? Then he says then, the proof is, there's proof in that. People want to come to Jesus. I accepted Jesus in 1974 and I'm on my way to heaven. And I've lived my own life, done my own thing, do whatever I want to do. But I accepted Jesus in 1974, so I'm going to heaven. It ain't going to be that way. It's the proof. There's proof. We're going to try your spirit. We're going to measure it to the Word of God. Is it obedient to the Word of God? For many deceivers are entered into the world. We have so much deception. And I would like to say the deception's only with the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the New Age people, and on and on with all of those things that we can clearly distinguish have nothing to do with God. The sad part of the reality is is in so much of the church today because the church is so joined themselves to the world and they live like the world and there's this all acceptance thing my husband's ministering to this man that he's working for right now and he's got all of his little incense set up and all of the he's done work in Nepal and so he's got all the little statues and he burns incense to all the statues and then he's got a a Jesus ringer on his phone and it's, and it's what's up today. We accept the Muslims and the Buddhists and the Hindus and, you know, and Jesus and we just put it all in. Have you seen that sign coexist? Oh, Lord, have mercy. They're just going to all coexist in hell. They want to coexist. It's a hot place and there isn't going to be any visiting down there. You're all alone for eternity. You may be able to see other people being tortured, but you're all alone for eternity, just tortured by demons for the rest of your life, which is forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You want to hang on to rebellion? You think rebellion's doing you good? You can think about it in hell for eternity. Rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. God won't tolerate it. Rebellion le leads into more deception and more deception and more deception. And you that preach the gospel at one point could very well turn and preach deception if you hold on to rebellion. You could be a deceiver, leading many people astray. Because so many once walked after God, but then they got heady and high-minded. And they went after their own ways. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. It's another gospel. They're preaching another Jesus, one that, one that is not in the word of God. They made up their own Jesus because it's not the one in the word of God because it's not his doctrine. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have received, which we've wrought, but that we receive a full reward. <clears throat> Look to those things with all diligence. Whosoever transgresses and abides not in the doctrine of Christ if you transgress a transgressor to the Word of God, you do not abide in the doctrine of Christ. He does not have God. He that abides in Him and His Word abides in us. He has both the Father and the Son. If you abide in Him... If you love him, you keep his commandments. The transgressor, transgressing the doctrine of Christ. If there come any unto you and bring not the doctrine of Jesus Christ, not 
his doctrine that he has so clearly laid out in his word for us that I don't know how anybody could read the word of God and say that sin won't take you to hell. If there are any come to you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Don't have anything. For he that bids him Godspeed is partaker of his evil de deeds. Have no part of him. If he's preaching another gospel, another Jesus, Galatians chapter 1, Paul talks about them preaching another Jesus. How, how I've so, so soon departed from the foundation of the gospel that I've laid for you, that you would go and you would preach another Jesus. You would receive another Jesus. You would take in deception. You would go again and try by your own ability to walk out the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. He came to do away with your ability. That was law. People want to go back to Romans chapter 7 and live there. They want to be stuck in Romans chapter 7. The things that I would do, I cannot. And the things that I can't do, you know, it's just... A mess. I can't accomplish anything in God. Well, they don't know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit hasn't come and taken over. Or they were touched and then they fell away from God because when you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. You will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh when you walk in the Spirit. Because the Spirit... When he's in you, he quickens your mortal body. Now we're in Romans chapter 8, which straightens out Romans chapter 7 and makes you understand. And, and, and if you look at all the past tense in Romans chapter 7 of when he was in past dying, and Paul's talking about how it was when he was under the law. And he laid out a clear foundation in Romans chapter 6. He said, we're dead with Christ. Now we're raised up together with him. Christ died one time, even so we also should die one time. We're even, he's, he's, we are completely dead under sin because we're dead with Christ and we're buried with him now. So he didn't dig himself up in Romans chapter 7. It's just people get confused about what they read because they want to stay over there and have a reason to play with their sin. They want to have Jesus and they want to stay over in Romans chapter 7 when we've got the whole Bible that clearly talks about how to live with God in holiness and truth and righteousness. And we have a chapter that people want to get confused on because when I read it, I don't have any confusion. You know, and if, if you got into Romans chapter 6, you got it clear. You once, you yielded your members unto unrighteousness. Now so, like as you yielded your members unto unrighteousness, now yield your members to righteousness. Just like those that are alive and raised up together with him. We were dead, buried, and now we're raised up together with him. He quickens our mortal body through his spirit so we can live by the Holy Ghost. The power, all the power of God is given unto us to walk it out. And Paul's like in Galatians going, are you guys crazy? Why do you want to go and try by your own ability to do what you know you already can do? Nobody was ever able to walk it out by their ability. And Christians today, over and over again, how many times have you found yourself trying to work it out in your own ability? You can't understand the Scripture. You can't understand nothing by your own ability. You have to say, Father, by your Holy Spirit, reveal. <laughs> Reveal this to me. Father, I thank you for the strength of the Holy Spirit. That's why he said, keep yourself. Keep yourself in the love of God, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's why he said, pray continually. There's so much on pray continually. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the understanding. Sing in the Spirit. Sing in the understanding. Pray without ceasing. Stay in that fellowship and that connection with God and you won't find yourself in your own ability that gets all up in your head and confuses the Scripture and then brings in deception and rebellion and causes you to go astray. I mean, what do they do with Scriptures like 1 John chapter 5? We know that whosoever is born of God sins not. But he that is begotten of God keeps himself. We know that whosoever is born of God sins not. 
But he that is begotten of God keeps himself and that wicked one cannot touch him. You need to blow that one up before them in Romans chapter 7. But I mean, you just, it's, it's sandwiched between 6 and 8. And I mean, 8 is all about the Spirit who's quick in this mortal body. Who through the Spirit we do mortify the deeds of the flesh. Through the Spirit, not through your own ability. Every time you find it not working out, it's because you're in your own ability trying to, to walk it out and keep the law, trying to go, I am going to overcome this, I'm going to do it. Yeah, you are not. You're going to fall flat on your face so the Lord can show you that it's only through the Spirit. He wants you to be completely, completely and totally dependent upon Him to do it through the Spirit. That's why Jesus came and He cleansed the temple. When you receive Him, He comes and He cleanses the temple and He washes it clean and He makes it whiter than snow. So He can pour out His Holy Spirit on an obedient vessel to take you over into the realms of glory and reveal the Father, reveal the Son, show you all the things that the Father is doing and saying, <laughs> give you that relationship and fellowship with Him. Hallelujah. And then, and then I can't skip past 1 John chapter 3, and we'll skip down to verse 3. And every man that has this hope, well, behold, start at verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on, upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. And every man that has this hope in Him does what? He purifies himself. Through the Spirit. Through the Spirit. We've got that clear in so many verses, and if you want me to dig it all out, you know, we'll be here to 7 o'clock in the morning. And then it'll start raining. Oh, hallelujah. Maybe the rain of heaven would come if we stayed all night. Whosoever committeth sin... Transgress, then that would be some hungry people. I think it would, be, it would be weeded out by seven in the morning. I might be here by myself. <laughs> Whosoever committeth sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to let us continue in our sin. <laughs> he was manifested to take away our sin, to take it away. They put their hand on that animal sacrifice and they imparted their sin. That throat was slit or the goat was sent off and banished and it departed from them. That was their separation for the year. Jesus once died and paid for our sin for eternity. And if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Not when we sin, everybody takes out if and puts when there. That, you know, the scriptures that would even be contrary to what I'm reading are so minute and people just pluck them out of somewhere and they just run with those and they, they forget the rest of the Bible. Their Bible has so many holes in it cut out that, I mean, it, it can't even hold together. Because they surely cannot be reading this. He was manifested to take away our sins. Whosoever abides in Him, if we abide in Him, then He abides in us. Whatsoever we will, whatsoever we ask, it shall be done. Whosoever abides in Him sins not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen Him, neither known Him. If you sin, you have not seen Him, neither do you know Him. Now, how can we change that one around? How do they figure, how does people figure past this stuff? I don't get it. Little children, let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. If he's in you, then the fruit of your life is righteousness. There's proof in that pudding. Somebody can tell you that's banana pudding, but you're not going to believe it till you taste it. Especially if it smells like blueberry. 
The proof is in the righteousness. If you say that you're in Him, you're going to walk even as He walked. I've got to read that just in a minute. Hold on. Little children, let no man deceive you. That's the point. Deception. There is such a strong spirit of delusion and deception in the world today. Oh, people, I mean, it is an hour. It is a time that we must keep ourselves. We must keep ourselves in the Word. We must guard our heart. We must make sure that we must come before the Lord continually and make sure that we have no rebellion, that we, we, don't, we don't try to walk in our own way and do it our own way. We keep ourselves humble and surrendered and submitted to the Father. Because there's deception going around trying to grip people and take them to an eternal hell without God all the time thinking that they're on their way to heaven. So many lies, so many deceiving lies. You can look at your life by how you live it and measure it up to the Word of God. And it's very simple. You don't condemn yourself. If it doesn't measure up to the Word, then just run to Jesus and fall on your face and say, Lord, cleanse me and wash me in your blood. Father, I want to follow you. I want to follow the Holy Spirit. Lord, Holy Spirit, come lead me and guide me into all truth. If, you, if you're yielding yourself to the Spirit, He takes you into truth, not deception. He that committeth sin is of the devil. He that commits sin is of the devil. You know... When Jesus was on earth, you know, he had revival. It was revival. John the Baptist came and he began the revival. He was the, he was the forerunner. And he said, you repent, repent. And he saw the Pharisees coming. And he said, what are you vipers doing coming down here? Called them snakes. He was, not, he was a nice preacher. He called the Pharisees, the one everybody's supposed to look up to. He called them snakes. Jesus, you know, he full of the love of God because he is God. Overflowing with love. Looked at him and said, you're of your father the devil. Said, you, you pass over land and sea to make one proselyte so they can be a twofold child of the devil. I mean, he laid it out. He said that the devil was a liar from the beginning. And basically right there he was calling them liars. I mean, the list, I was looking at the list of things that Jesus publicly called the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And that was some sweet preaching. That's what love is. Love is when you see somebody headed for the freeway getting ready to run right into the middle of the freeway, a four-year-old that doesn't know better, and cars are going shoo, shoo, shoo. You grab them and you stop them. You don't let them do whatever they want to do. You teach them. You don't let the baby reach up and turn the burner on the stove on and gas the whole house. You teach them because you love them. You teach them the right way. Jesus came to bring the truth of the gospel. He doesn't go around and pat you on the back all the time. Sometimes he pats you on the bottom hard for you to get when you're going in the wrong direction. And thank God, that's the goodness of God. Every time the Lord shakes you and gives you a good paddling, rejoice in it. Say, oh, thank you, Father, that I got mine now because I surely don't want it in eternity. I surely don't want it then. He that committeth sin is of the devil, 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 of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil. Hallelujah, it's been destroyed. And he only has power over you if you let him. My mother used to quote that scripture. She said, no man can pluck you out of God's hand, but you can walk out. Because God gave you a will, and he will not hold you there against your will. He will keep you as long as you're in a repentant, humble attitude, learning to walk with him. He will keep you. 
But you must realize that he that sins is of the devil. So you through the Spirit must get a hold of some things and put to death those things that don't belong in your life. Make sure they're put to death, that you don't lo no longer go down that path. Because unrepented sin will take you to hell. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. I didn't write this. <laughs> For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now here's how to tell if you've been born of God or not. Because sin makes you miserable and you're running to the cross. And you're saying, oh Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. I need the blood, Lord, I took the wrong turn. You're not over here continuing and living in sin repetitively over and over and over again. You deal with it. Repentance means a 180, a complete turnaround. You do not continue in it. That is repentance, and that's how to know that you're in Him. In this, the children of God are manifested and the children of the devil. So are you on this side or are you on that side? Which side are you on? And I'm talking about committing sin. I'm not talking about the devil harassing you. Because the devil came out and harassed Jesus. The devil will be there on a daily basis trying to harass you. That's when I smile real big. Because I don't want to let him see that he's even, I'm even noticing him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And then you can praise your way out through the Holy Ghost, out of the trial and the temptation. The enemy come there and he can just pound on your door all day long. But you're rejoicing in the God of your salvation. Now you're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. You're kept. You're kept. Because you're not listening to his garbage. You're not getting turned aside to walk over into his worldly pleasures and those things that would try to tempt you and allure you. Hallelujah. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. See, because love is the fulfillment of all the law. When we have the love of God in us, we don't want to do anything to hurt anybody. Very simple. Romans chapter 13. I think it's verse 10 through 12, 8 through 12, somewhere in there. Love fulfills all the law. That love that the Holy Ghost comes and puts in our hearts. That love that the Holy Ghost brings, that all we have to do is yield ourselves to. It loves our neighbor as, it's, as ourself. And even greater, it loves our neighbor as Christ loved us and gave himself for us. 1 John. See, we have to keep these things in remembrance. You know, and I'm crying out and I'm praying for revival and I wanted to preach on how revival is, is always brought on the wings of prayer. And, and I wanted to just talk about revival. But we have to deal with these things that the enemy is blasting through the church today. We have to make sure that you are girded up in these things, that you hear them, that you take a hold of them, and that you live them and that you walk them out. So the enemy doesn't deceive any of you so we can go on to revival. We get these things settled and we can move on and we can see a great move of God. Greater than what we're seeing now. We're seeing a move of God. But greater than what we're seeing now, we can see the thing full blown. But we have to have these things rooted and grounded on the inside of us. We cannot let the word of God slip. We cannot lose these things. Verse 3, And hereby we know 
that we know Him if we keep His commandments. Here's the proof again. Proof again. Hereby we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I love Him, I know Him, and keeps not His commandments, is a liar. A liar. A liar. A liar, and the truth's not in Him. So when somebody tells you that they know God, and it's okay to do this, if the enemy tells you that they know God, but it's okay, you know, a, a deceiving spirit that's really the enemy, coming through a man, or just thoughts that it's okay, so-and-so does this, you know, whatever. Other church leaders do this, these things, and it's sin. It's a lie. There's no truth in it. You want to run to the Holy Spirit that leads you into truth, not the lie. But whosoever keeps his word in him, barely is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. He that saith he abides in him ought himself also to walk, even as he walked, even as Jesus walked. And we have been given that ability to do that. Jesus came and He destroyed the works of the devil. And He gave us the Holy Spirit. And we can have the full measure of the Holy Spirit. Of His fullness we have received in grace for grace. And we can walk and we can live in it. And in that we have all power to be a complete and total overcomer through Christ who strengthens us. Led and guided into all truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I don't know why the Lord had me preach on this. I mean, if, if there's a favorite chapter in the Bible for me, it's John in First and Second and Third John. I love John. I love his writings. I love Revelation. I just love John. I just love how John leaned his heart to the breast of Jesus and he leaned his ear to the breast of Jesus and he listened to the heartbeat of Jesus. He, he just was so passionate about Jesus. He, he, he referred to himself as the one that loved him, the one that loved his loved um, Jesus, the disciple that loved him. Oh, hallelujah. But I love his writings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The passion and the truth that we find in it and, I mean, and if we just had that, we would know how to completely walk with God. If there was nothing else but that. But there is so much more. There is so much more that we can look at. And in, in, in every book, it is so clear about us walking with Him in the fullness of the glory of His Holy Spirit and keeping ourselves in Him. And I'm just going to go to a couple more scriptures in um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Be diligent that ye may be found of him. And our diligence is simply yielding ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Again, yield, yielding ourselves, our surrender, not our ability, not our works of the law, not what we can do, but what He can do in us and through us if we will keep ourselves right there in His presence, in that love. And in um, 1 Peter... 119, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and your hope might be in God, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in obeying the truth.
through the Spirit. This is how we obey the truth, through the Spirit. Obeying the truth through the Spirit. Unto unframed love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with pure heart fervently. Being not born again, being born again, not of the, incru incru the corruptible seed, but of an incorruptible, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. We praise you, Father, for the Holy Spirit that brings us into obedience that teaches us how to live and to walk out your word. There's so much here that... Whew. I have to... I want to read Titus, just a few more scriptures here. Um, Titus chapter 2, verse um, 12. No, verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto him a peculiar, peculiar people, zealous of good works. And then 2 Timothy. I know I'm reading a lot of scripture tonight instead of just preaching, but I just, I feel like it's important that you turn the pages, that you make sure that you've got these things marked down, that you're not going on and just walking it out the way you think or what you just heard Pastor Mark say, but you're, you're turning the pages and you're looking into the Word, you're gazing upon the Word. As you look into His Word, you're changed from glory to glory. You're changed by the Word of God. You're changed by these words. These words are life. They're living. They become living through the Holy Spirit. Until you have the Holy Spirit, they're black ink on white paper. You don't get it. But by the Holy Spirit, it becomes alive and living to you. And there's so much right here that people never turn to. They never see. They just talk about ideas. And even people that sit in, have sit in this church for years, I mean... I'm absolutely stunned. I'm taken away by the deception that they have gone into and, and saying things that I'm like, how did they not, sitting in this church, listening to the Word of God, how did they not get rooted and grounded in that? Why were they not rooted and grounded? Why are they led away? Why are they now captive by Satan? Believing all the time that they're on their way to heaven and they're on their way to a devil's hell. How is this possible? For people to sit in the church where the Word of God is preached like this. How is it possible? So maybe some rustling of pages and turning to each and every one of the scriptures. I mean, Pastor Mark sends it out on the daily bread. But I'm afraid too many people are just skimming through it. And they're not, they're not diligent, diligently studying to show themselves approved a workman unto God that rightly divides the word of truth. That the word of truth can be rightly divided, it can be wrongly divided. That's why you've got to study. You've got to know the word of God for yourself. You can't just say, I go to the abiding place, but you've got to know what God's word says. It's got to be real and living on the inside of you. You must be a partaker of this word for you. You must partake of this word. You must let it be living. You must let this grow in you and, and vibrate every cell of your body. You must know that the Holy Spirit is real and living in you. And if He's not, if the truth of it is, is that He's not, then come to the truth and let the Holy Spirit take you over. No longer hold on to your life anymore to do it your way. Don't walk in fear having to grip the steering wheel of your life and say, if I let go and I let God have it, I'm going to fall apart or something's going to go wrong. That's a deception. That's a lie of the enemy. 
Take a hold of the Word of God. Every bit of it be rooted and grounded. Be prepared for that deceiving, lying power of darkness that would come against you. With the Word, let it be rooted and grounded on the inside of you. And it can be if you're not reading it and you're not looking at it and you're not gazing upon it and you're not measuring your life up to what it says. It can't be. If you're allowing things in your life to continually take you down, if you're allowing strife and bickering and hatred in your life, if you're allowing these things in your spirit, they will lead to more and more ungodliness. They will deceive you. But if you will measure up your life to the Word of God and say, Oh, Father, by your precious Holy Spirit, lead me into the truth. I don't want anything to do with this lying power of darkness that has set itself against me, that has used me and abused me for so many years. I'm not going around this mountain anymore. I'm not going to allow the enemy to trick me and stumble me and cause me to fall into the same trap again. I've been stuck in this trap too many times and for too long I've allowed it. I'm not going to continue in disobedience to the Word of God. I'm not going to continue in rebellion. I'm not going to allow this seed to grow on the inside of me any longer, but I'm going to look into the law of liberty, and I'm going to be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of me. So rustle those pages, and look here. And oh, Father, I pray that not one more person fall into such deep deception to where I see almost, oh God, there's no hope for them. And they sat in this church for many years. It's got to be impossible to come and hear the word of God like this and to fall in such deception. But yet I see it's true and it breaks my heart. And when... We would love to just be focusing on revival. We must deal with these things. And we must make sure that every person in this place is rooted and grounded in the Word. You take a hold of this. You bring the change. Let's come in with the change. Let's live out the change. Let's go come in and go out and lay down and get up with the change, with meditating upon the Word of God, with a taking a hold of it. Not following around what other men do, but follow around what the Word of God says. Walk as Jesus walked. I don't care what anybody else does. Walk like Jesus walked. Live like Jesus lived. Be what Jesus is. Let Him live through you. No more deception. Oh God, we must fear and tremble. Not one person in this place knows how long they're going to live. We know that God protects us and He keeps us and the angels of the Lord encamp around about us that fear Him. But I'm going to tell you people, if you're slipping in here and you're playing with sin and you keep going back to that same sin and you keep falling in that thing and you keep allowing that thing to, to grip your heart and grip your spirit and you keep messing with it again and again and again, you're not right with God. You're not right with God. You must come to God and you must completely repent of that sin. You cannot get a hold of that coexist spirit that is in the land today that let's just be happy with everything and everybody. And you may think in your mind that you don't have that, but if you're playing around in the devil's den, if you're playing around with the things of hell that will grip your soul for eternity, you are away from God and you must own up to it and you must repent and you must fall on your knees and cry out to God if He will have mercy on you. He's a gracious God. But if you continue in your sin, you know the protection of God is not upon you. And Satan's plan is to pull you off the cliff into the eternal hell. And it's no game. There's no game. It's no game that we're playing. It's our eternal soul. I'm not trying, I'm not here to try to make people happy. I'm here to deal by the Spirit with the issue.
People cannot look at the immorality and the ungodliness that's going on in this country and not be pricked to the heart and grieved and fall upon their face and cry out for this country. We cannot be careless with all the stuff and the church is opening their arms to it. God loves the sinner, but He hates the sin. And the sin must be dealt with. And the only way the sin can be dealt with is that the truth comes and speaks to it very strongly and boldly. And if you don't stand up and you don't speak against it and you don't pray against it, you'll find it in your household. If you don't stand against it, if you open the door and you participate with just a little bit of it, you'll find more than what you participated among your family and your children. You don't want to participate with it one bit because it's not only your life you deal with, but it's the souls of those that are around you. You affect your children, your family, and your friends, and the atmosphere. And why should we affect the atmosphere with ungodliness when we can affect the atmosphere with holiness and righteousness and truth? When we can stand up and we can really be the glorious church that Jesus Christ paid for us to be. He's called us out of the darkness into His marvelous light, into His marvelous glory. Let's run after that marvelous glory. Hallelujah. And I'll just... There's so much more, but I'm going to end with this scripture. Nevertheless, the foundation of God. And it's really hard to read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and not read so much more. But nevertheless... Verse 19, the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And let every one that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. We don't want to have named the name of Christ and then stand before Him on that day and He say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You never stopped playing around in the devil's camp. You continued on but you would never stop playing around. It's time to stop. It's time to stop it. It may not be adultery. It may not be a fornication that you're dealing with. It could be just backbiting. It could be strife, bickering. It could be... Let me make this clear. If you don't love somebody like Jesus loved them, and you're willing to give yourself for them, then the opposite of love is what? But you don't want to say hate. You want to say, they annoy me. (laughs) You want to say, it's better for me not to go too close to them. Or, you know, we just want to keep it. I don't want to get in strife and that person's strifeful. Or I don't want to come under that person's issues. So I was... Just name it. Just name it. Just name it for what it is. If you can't go up and hug them and love them and cook them dinner and bake them a cake or whatever, if you can't bless them, if you can't be good to them, why don't why don't we what is the opposite of loving? Hate. What is the opposite of strife? I mean of Strife, where you're always bickering, always got something to say, always causing some kind of problem, looking for an issue. How about you be the answer instead of a problem? Be the answer to the need instead of causing a problem, being the person that stirs up strife. God hates that. Being the person that's disobedient. You know why God brings you to a place of where you have to come under authority? To try your obedience. You look at Joseph. He was tried. He was tried all the way. Joseph had a complete reason to hate his brothers when they threw him in the pit. Just be thrown in the pit. Then ripping his coat off of him and then throwing him in the pit. 
He had a reason to hate them. And then they pulled him out of the pit and they sold him into slavery. He really had a reason to hate them. To just wrap himself up in his wounds for the rest of his life and waste his life in hatred. And then, how could it be fair for him to get sold into Potiphar's house and all the blessing come and then his wife lie, then Potiphar's wife lie about him? How can that even be fair? How can God allow this? You're at a test of will you obey? So I can see if I can use you. God continually tested Abraham. And at one point, at finally, that one day, when Abraham was willing to offer up his own son, Isaac, he said, now Abraham, now I know, now I know, now I know, now I know. And really that same thing was said to Joseph after he ended up not only sold into slavery, a slave, but a slave in prison. Now how can that be fair? Are right and where is God and where where are all these dreams that God gave him how is this happening but we know Joseph kept himself humble all the way through because again and again even though the trial came the blessing came and so he was running the prison and had favor in the prison and had he fell into his despair and despondency and got all hooked up in that he wouldn't have been at that place in the prison where Pharaoh would have sent for him. His, his ear wouldn't have been in tune. He wouldn't have been saying the right thing. He wouldn't have been interpreting dreams in the prison because he would have been all in a heap crying about his bad situation and how life wasn't fair to him. And it was supposed to be this way, but now it's this way. And he's pulled away from his, his father and his, his younger brother and he, all these years away from them and all the hurts and the wounds that could have been there. You tell me somebody that's any more hurt and wounded than Joseph could have been. Anybody that's had any more done to them than that. But God was preparing Joseph to be obedient, to surrender, to say, yes, Lord, in the middle of all the persecution, in the middle of all the trial, not to be disobedient, but to be a servant before him so he could raise him up and put him to be the richest man upon the earth next to Pharaoh, the most blessed man upon the earth. And on top of that, have second to Pharaoh, the most authority of any man on earth. So he could save his family. But God worked him over. He took that clay. You take clay from the riverbank. You pick up that clay and you go, I want to make a vessel with this clay. You get that right clay on the riverbank that you can make a vessel with. You know, it doesn't just come at Michael's in a package. They got to get it from somewhere. And they've got to do something to it before it gets to the store and it's that hunk of clay. They take that clay and they, they put it through screens to take out the rock and the glass and all the little things that if you were to form a vessel with, that it would break them if a piece of that rock was left in there. So he's the potter, we're the clay. Go through the screen. And then just get wadded up again and be willing to go through the screen and just be obedient. And in that obedience, then God can use you. But if you hold on to your life, you'll stay the wreck and misery that you're in. The whole reason that you are in a battle and it's hard and it's tough is because you're holding on and you're, you, you do not trust God to take a hold of your life. You don't trust Him. You're holding on to your hurt and your pain and the fear of what you've gone through. And the whole reason you went through what you did is because when God put you through the trial, you didn't say, yes, Lord. You tried to figure it out. You got into your own self and you did not yield it to the Holy Spirit. And now you're suffering in the middle of it. And God says, let go tonight. God says, let go tonight. Let go tonight. Let go tonight. God says, come to Him, fall upon your knees and repent if you continued in sin. And He will deliver you out of it. But the way out of it is through the Spirit, not through your own ability. Not by, not by the works of the law, but the, by the works of the Spirit. By the Spirit life. He wants to bring you on over into the realms of glory. He doesn't want you to stay. He doesn't want one of us in this place to stay where we're at tonight. He wants us to go to a deeper realm.
And if the, if the Holy Spirit's been talking to you tonight and you know that he has called out some things that's going on in your life, I would like the opportunity to pray for you. But I'm not going to single you out. I'm just going to pray for everybody that wants to be prayed for for any reason, whether you're sick or... And I love that one of Brother Millen telling all the people that were sick to raise their hands and then to leave the church. I'm like, oh, I laughed. It's so good. Go get it right. Oh, hallelujah. And you know, but tonight we want people to get it right. We want you to get it right. We want, to, we want you to say from this day forward, I will never stay the same. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. I'm not going to let these things hold on to me anymore. We bre- we're breaking these things. The Holy Spirit's breaking these things off of you tonight. It's broken off of you tonight. It's broken off of you tonight. No more. No more walking down that path. You yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. So if you, have, if you want prayer for any reason, I want to pray with you. And when you come out up, you know, and there's certain things, if you want me to pray specifically for them, I will be glad to pray with you. And we will see that victory in Jesus' name. A new day. A new thing. Let's get this dealt with and let's move on to the revival in the land today. The glory of God being revealed in the land today. Let's not be careless with the things of God. Let's not be stiff-necked and hard-hearted. Walking in our own way. And if you have an offering, you can give it at the same time you come up for prayer. Come to the house of the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We do not have to live in the things of the past. And an hour ago was the things of the past. He is new every morning. His steadfast love never ceases. And the Lord has brought you here to this moment and to this time to take you to the place that He wants you to go. He's brought you here. He's allowed you to be tried, tempted, tested to prove you, to see if you would be a vessel of honor. There's vessels of wood and clay and there's vessels of gold and silver. I want those two that can't be burnt up. We want to be fit for the master's use, but it's all in surrender. It's all walked out in surrender. Now, if the Lord has spoke to you and he's dealt with you, about anything, if he's pointed anything out, I ask you please to not walk away from it. Please do not. Do not walk away from it. Do not walk out without knowing that you are completely delivered from that thing that has held you and gripped you.
Father, I thank you right now for that wonderful work of grace that strikes the hearts of every person in this place. That no single soul will hold anything back from you. That every single heart would come before you right now. If there's anything that's going on in their life that's not right, they'll repent of it. If there's anything that they're holding on to that is a bad attitude, wrong attitude, something that belongs to a realm of ungodliness, immorality, they will forsake it and turn from it. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, that there will be every heart in this place committed and surrendered and submitted to you. Right now in Jesus' name. Let this realm of glory fill your soul. I know a place where you live the overcoming life. It's where you're filled up with divine power that comes from interacting with this presence. He freely gives these rivers. He freely gives this refreshing. It's yours tonight and you're going to take hold of it. It's going to happen in this place. Banana mangir bandore be sempre pagate to manenda. Sa pagate to shalomon geteya. Para bafro mongana na sato. Pia brave go su to yenengana na shipeya. Sa ti brave o papai. Sa primenta sa yolo ba ko so manenda. Your glory now Lord. Your glory now. Everybody, just, I want you to come up here. Just come up here and find a place to, to kneel before the Lord. Just come kneel before the presence of the Lord. Come find a place. Come find a place. Last Sunday night, when the Spirit of the Lord called for everyone who was hungry, I was just so blessed to see everybody come. Everyone is hungry for the things of the Spirit. Tonight is a night to get everything right. To get every dimension of your heart and your life yielded to the Spirit of the Lord. So that Father can begin to show us all the things that are absolutely essential if we're going to be used by Him and make a difference and be a witness if there's going to be a change, religion is not going to get the job done. More good preaching, as it were, is not going to get the job done. More intellect's not going to get the job done, but a flowing forth of the power of the Holy Ghost through your life yes. is going to change everything. Yes. Yes. Right now, you begin to lift up your voice. Just begin to worship Him. Just begin to yield to Him. Just begin to consecrate your life to Him right now. Let Father take a full control. Let Him have every dimension of our lives. Lord God, we thank You that anything that needs to be washed away from our lives, oh God, we're desperate about it tonight. Lord, that every sin, every stain of sin, every wrong attitude, every wrong thing that has been allowed in, the, in anyone's life here tonight, it comes to an end in Jesus' name. It comes to an end. It comes to an end. Right now, if there's unforgiveness in your heart, you let it go. Right now. Right now, if there's anything that is going on in your life that is unholy, you renounce it right now. Right now, renounce it.
Sukara baraba si brema inglamba dobre beo. Zira la baki brebe brema manu la betiru. Father, your glory now. Hallelujah. Ah, your glory now, Lord. Cabra be, kudu bushori, mama be, tu la mamora siteri. Father, your mercy now. Father, your mercy now. Father, your mercy now, Lord. Father, your glory now. Kira mama mana ngeder mama ndere bena ndoler mzi dia nana ngeder mama bere 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 mama ndolo lo bega le bere. Sura mama nana ndere mande brava kila di doro mando si brave mande mama nana ne bene. Sura mama mande mama gore bena mande mama ndala kishala ne bere ba ya la la si tere. Kora bebe prima maina, kora bebe prima mondo ye. Sere babara mande bebe, bagora mama ne mena ino lo basora bare. Just let that glory of heaven flow out of your innermost being. Let those tongues of fire issue forth from your life. Let the prayer and the intercession of the Holy Ghost change everything about your disposition. Right now, the sin has got to go that the Holy Spirit's power can flow. The sin has got to go if the power of the Holy Ghost is going to flow. The unbelief has got to go. The doubt has got to go. The doubt and unbelief has got to go if the Holy Spirit's going to flow, if the power of God's going to flow. Give me my man, give me my man, give me my man, man in Belouya. Lift up your voice with me. Lift up your voice with me. Lift up your voice. La karaba reba ya la batoya. Kora be 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 riba be ya la la batoya. Kora be be riba be riba dora be riba be be le be le man he daya. Kurama mama ne mama ne manga la la mama ne be 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 de guru salavra vai devi. Hallelujah. Kurama mama ngandi bre mama dololos dololos bre me me ne namolo dore be be bre mama mama ma le 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 be bre me gala vala mandali zure mama bre me gada ra mama bala mama ma de be re be vada ba ki bre me manda bala vada mamras. Just lift your hands, lift your voice. Lift your hands, lift your voice. So rebeke, mama mana na 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 li mina yere, ku bala mana de ribane de. So kraba bari mama de le 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 mena lolo bokuri mama de le be re be be de bara ba ya ramagar, right out of your belly. Ku rebe de de bri ba gila de ya la ba bri ba ya la busti. Let that wonderful rivers of the glory of the Holy Ghost flow. Let that flow come. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled right now. Be filled. Mama mramangere, mama ndala bakire, mama ndala bala manjar, mbe breve be. Kura mama mana bre menga bre mama bre mbe le bre be kita bre basot. All the change comes right where the Holy Ghost is allowed free course. There's no change without the flowing forth of these rivers. There is no change without that wonderful flow. The Holy Ghost. Mama mana membre mambara bakir bebara bala bebara bala de. 
Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, strengthen every person here right now. Strengthen every person in this place. Strengthen them by your spirit and their inner being that that wonderful, glorious realm of heaven might flow continually. Might flow continually. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Be strengthened by the Spirit. Be strengthened right now. Hallelujah. Be strengthened right now by the Spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> Be streak that! Be streak that! Be streak that! Be streak that right now by the Spirit in your inner being right now. Jesus, right now in Jesus' name. Right now in 
Jesus name right now in Jesus name right now in Jesus name right now in Jesus name right now in Jesus name now I want to I want to say this I want to say this the manifest power of God that was here this past Sunday night there is absolutely no reason why every single person shouldn't live in that glory. And you know, listen, I'm going to say this once again. Last Sunday night was such an amazing blessing to me to see every one of you respond to a call for more hunger for the things of the kingdom of God. I know every one of you, you, you you're just laboring tirelessly. You're laboring in the ministry here for the children's ministry it's as, as it's being developed. You're laboring every continually in the street ministries. You're laboring in the things of getting the, the other building ready. There's a lot going on. But there's no reason for you not to continually stay in that wonderful manifest presence of the Lord. And I tell you tonight that that manifest presence of Jesus that was here last Sunday night in such a wonderful way because everybody was responding. It's here right now. And in one of the most important things in responding to the work of grace is just to feel his love and acceptance. Once you have once you have dealt with any sin and any wrongdoing, it's 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 just, it's it's instantly taken care of and you begin to feel his acceptance. You cannot enter in feeling rejected or isolated or shut out. You cannot. So right now you just feel accepted in the beloved because I'm telling you, you are. I'm telling you you are. I'm telling I'm telling you. Like I said I, like I said last Sunday night. Now this is the body place. And I I, gear, I, I want you to understand something. There is a work of God that Father has been preparing us for that we will step into. There have been seasons in God that it seemed like that everything that was going to just break open and the whole region would be saved. But it's just all been getting things developed, getting ready. Don't be discouraged. Be confident, be bold, but I want you to grab a hold of something tonight that you have to realize. A sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that needs to be developed. We're going after a sensitivity to the Holy Ghost that needs to be developed. The more sensitive that I've let the Lord make me to the Holy Spirit, the more I've been able to receive from heaven the good things of heaven. And to walk with Father and do the things that He's called me to do. And He gave me that so that I could give it to you. And what He taught me, I'm teaching you. Tonight. So I just want you to be accepted. I want you to, I want you to, just, I, want a moment of I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost until you're, the, the atmosphere of your life to the tiredness goes, to the fatigue goes, to the problem goes. And then if you don't have any fatigue or tiredness or problem, just come pray in the Holy Ghost until the, the overwhelming presence of Jesus strikes your soul even in a greater way. Because I tell you, He's here. I tell you, His glory is here. I tell you, His power is here. I tell you, signs and wonders here. 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, we consecrate our lives to you. To live fully for you. Oh. To live completely under your charge, oh God. To do thy will, oh God. To live for thy charge, oh Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 Jesus, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the working of your mighty power here in this place among your people, oh God. Thank you, Father God, for great changes. Thank you, Father, for great maturity. Thank you, Father, for great boldness in the faith. Thank you, Father, for sensitivity to you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> So Hallelujah. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to be a little bit of a bottle. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to be a little bit of a bottle. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to be a little bit of a bottle. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to be a little bit of a bottle. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to be a little bit of a bottle. So if you get a little bit of a bottle, I'm going to Holy, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship and we praise you. If any of if any of if any of you want prayer, just stand up on, on stand up where you're at, and I'll just come to you and pray for you. Any of you that want prayer, stand up where you're at. I'll come pray for you. Because you're not leaving here sick tonight. You're not leaving here hurting tonight. You're not leaving here discouraged tonight. You're going out of here bold in the faith, full of great confidence in God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I tell you, the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost has never, ever been this strong in this place. What God's been doing over the past six months, I want everybody to be a part of it because I'm telling you, things that God is, God is shaping things right now for a great outpouring of His Spirit. And I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I will convince you this. This is ground zero. I've heard it out of heaven. Now that pain goes out of your body right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, yes. Now you live in that now, Jason, Jason of God. Jesus. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the fire of your presence right here. Sikaram mande le kina jesha mambre ne. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Right out of your belly flows. Right out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. Receive right now. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. Just receive. And just, just let the joy of the Lord bubble up out of your belly. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. Let the 
sweet presence of Jesus take hold of you now. That's it. Change. Father, thank you for the anointing upon Kate's life. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> A fiery anointing. Fire anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now it's time for that joy come bubble up out of your belly. Time with Mong Blang Jorus. Nam Blang Day. Rambo Sterine. Baras Dai. Mala Sunday. Rebokai. Brombara Sterive. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive. 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 Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' Happy. 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 No more sad. Happy. Happy. Just receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just receive the goodness of his presence. There's goodness. There's a goodness in his presence. There's not a sadness in his presence. People don't need to run around and grieve and sorrow. Repentance is, and mercy is too easy. Okay, now it's time to get happy. Okay, hold up, hold up. Who's been spreading the travail around? No spreading travail. Happy. Somebody said, I have the burden of the Lord. <laughs> the Lord doesn't have a burden. <laughs> He's got a rest. He says, come unto me, all ye that are... Weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Tonight, tonight, change comes. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, in the name of Jesus. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Tonight, change comes. Tonight, right now, at this moment in time. Those of you who haven't had strength, you're going to have strength.
<laughs> Babies need to be healed. Is everybody healthy here in this house? They're healthy. They just want to be touched. Lord Jesus, I thank you for filling faith up right now with the glory. And for filling Judah up too. You just do that all the time. Just do that more and more. Paul said, I pray in the Holy Ghost more than you all. I think that everybody needs to start following Paul as he followed Jesus. I'm interested in praying in the Holy Ghost more than you all. I have found a realm that I'm certain everybody wants to know about. And all I did was obey God and began to build myself up in my holy, my, in my in most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. All I did was continue to give myself to be filled with the Spirit, speaking to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. And so now I commission you to do the same in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Strengthen in your inner being, Chrissy, to flow and function in the power of the living God. Father, I ask you to take Carlos and baptize him, oh God. <laughs> baptize him in your presence. Overwhelm him with your glory. Stoke them, David, they say. Supercharge them, oh God. <laughs> With divine power. Just lift your hands towards heaven, Carlos. Just receive right now. Just receive right now. Ra-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
I know that, listen to me, I know the things that the Lord has been giving me over this past month, this, just the past month. I've never experienced the presence of the Lord in my own personal life as I have over the past month. And I know that He gives it to me so I can give it out. And all we're doing is getting everybody just in expectation to receive. Now, I know, that, I know that there's been little pockets of problems. I know there's been some little pockets of problems. You two girls have had some problems. There's been little pockets of problems. I want you to, I want you to look around, and I want you to find people around you that need some help. I want, I want people to start pairing up and start watching out for a folks' soul. Okay? You, you, are you listening to me? I want you to both to stand up. I want you to listen. What's going on has nothing to do with anything other than harassing, tormenting demon spirits. And, and who's, who's, who's hooking up with these girls? Who's hooking up with them that is not an alternative to their mother's age? I mean, I praise, that you, praise God that you guys want to do that. That's good. But who hooking up with these girls that are closer to their age? Huh? You are? Well, that's good. Come stand up here by her. Because I'm telling you, dear people, when there's, when there's problems and there's issues going on, if people who are strong in the Lord who know how to pray for folks will come around them and help them, a change can come that may otherwise not come. So, Charity, who is it that you have... No one really close to your age. I think that there's probably, well, there's nothing more important, and I know that everybody's very, very busy, but there's nothing more important than taking care of the spiritual needs of the young people and people just, well, people of all ages, just pairing up with folks to just take interest in them, to pour into them, to help them. How many people do you have right now? You just have Katie? But Father, we need somebody for charity. Because we, we're going to have to recognize that we have to watch out after other people's souls. Father, we ask you now in Jesus' name to shut down this power of Satan that is a, that's come out against some of the young people girls in this church they would try to separate them from knowing the glory and the beauty and the splendor of what it means to live as your people Father I thank you that from this day forward Katie and Charity are going to know you in a way that they've never known you before your glory and your power and the manifest presence of heaven is going to be upon their life. And they're going to burn with your fire. They're going to burn with your purpose. Father, they take their place in the kingdom of God and begin to stand mighty in you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the anointing. Annika, are you going to be willing to stand alongside Cherry and help her? That's yeah. good. 
Hallelujah. I just want you to lay hands on it right now. <laughs> no more distraction ever again. Yes. 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 Nothing. Nothing. Yes. 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 Mighty God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage all of you to look to look around you and see people that are younger than you and the Lord that need encouragement. I want you to go pray with them, spend time with them, help them, encourage them, watch out for this soul. In doing that, you're going, you, you, yourself, you yourself are going to find an increase in the anointing manifest presence of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Annika, you just put your arm around Charity and you just help her. And Angelica, you just put your arm around Katie and you help her. And Who's out, who else has been having some challenges and you just need some help? You just need, some, need somebody just to... And, and Pastor Daniel, what we're going to have to do is we're just really going to have to understand how to more effectively help different age groups be responsible for the age group just underneath them. All the way up. How to find that time to pray together and, and minister the things of the Spirit together and encourage one another and prophesy over one another and lay hands on one another. Huh? Father, I pray for this breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. I ask you to give us wisdom to sort this out. Father, we ask you to give us wisdom and insight to sort this out. That everybody in this place moves to the same spirit, moves to the same anointing, moves to the same purpose. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 I'm feeling better about that situation there. There is more I think more measurable wickedness and immorality going on in the culture of elementary school right now than has ever been reported in the history of men. Because instead of texting, it's sexting. In elementary school, it's a popular common thing. Most people have no comprehension of what elementary kids school, school, school kids are going through. Most people have no understanding of how Satan is running right over top of everything. And yet, listen to me. Huh? And what I see is I see a consecration in this church that doesn't exist anywhere else. Because what I've looked around and I've seen, I've seen a bunch of people captivated by pornography. They're taken out by those demon spirits. Not a single prayer that they pray has any effect over those demon powers that are running uh, the, the, our society right now that are affecting the innocent. Now what we're going to do is when we see things going on out there in the world, not only are we going to have a fortified prayer and divine authority to go out against it, but we've got to be all the more aware of how Satan would come in and try to attack people in the ranks and in the company of God's house. And I, I praise God for everybody going out on Saturdays, knocking on doors, reaching out to the lost. But we've got to make sure that we have some Saturdays taking care 
over the house, making sure that everybody in the house is taken care of. Don't play games with the devil because he doesn't play games. He takes whatever little bit room we will give him and he comes and kills and steals and destroys. And we're going to rise up in Jesus' name now. And every one of us are going to become responsible for the people that are around us. If you're 13, you're responsible for the 12-year-olds. You listen to me. Because we in a war. Huh? If you're 14, you're responsible for the 13. 15, 14, 16, 15, 17, 16, 18, 17, 19, 18. 20, 19, 21, 20. Huh? Who are you responsible for right now? Huh? You get yourself a list. Who are you responsible for? You get yourself a list. You're full of the Holy Ghost. Huh? Who are you responsible for? Well, you need to touch heaven and get responsible for a bunch of people. Who are you responsible for? Well, you're going to get in. You need to get yourself some people... You don't have anybody, go look for someone. So I'm going to be responsible for you. I'm going to help you. Who are you responsible for? Well, you better get through the program. Who are you responsible for? Who are you helping? Well, get with the program. Here, people, we're going to have to watch out for one another's souls. We can't let stuff be going down around us. You're going to have to be watching. You're going to, everybody's going to have to get a hawk eye. You with me? Be your brothers and sisters' keeper. Get into their space. Get into their business. Huh? Watch out for this soul. Run every devil off you see harassing anybody. Amen? Amen. Good. We, have to, we have to start right here in the ranks of the house of God. Amen. Father, we ask, I ask to touch Diane right now. Lord, you know all the things that are happening. You know her needs. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Are you standing? I'm standing, but... <laughs> Come over here. Dear people, I want you to ask yourself the question. I want you to look around. Who on the planet right now is standing for holiness, righteousness, purity, and the moving of the Holy Ghost? I am. And, and I'm telling you, where that banner is being lifted, there needs to be a rallying. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm fighting battles everywhere I turn because men are running headlong into apostasy. You talk about crucifying Christ afresh. I don't really see it going on around here. I don't really see it going on around here. Thank you, Lord. But I do see it going on in churches, a mass, mm -hmm. where they assemble themselves and call upon the name of Jesus, go get drunk, mm -hmm. go commit sexual immoralities, and continue to come with their hands lifted high, supposedly praising God. They know God in it. And there's got to be a place where there is a change. There's got to be a place that there's got to be a lighthouse. And in any place that there's got to be such a lighthouse, it's going to be under a sailing attack and slander by Satan. And you guys are going to have to gang, gang up in the ranks. <laughs> Say, here we stand and will not be moved. You Amen. foul spirit of hell. Huh? Amen. Amen. 
You're going to have to watch out for those around you now. Now I'm hearing stronger than I ever heard it in my spirit. And I've been talking to people about it for the past three weeks, probably more than I've ever talked about it. And Father, I thank you for the anointing right over here on <laughs> Margaret. And Margaret, I want you to lay hands on, on Lindsay, because... Jayden. I mean, and Jaden. <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, too. <laughs> Lindsay, too. <laughs> because we want Jaden to be able to respond to the Holy yes, Ghost. Yes. Now, listen to me. I've seen too many of you children grow up and become adults and not be able to respond to the Holy Ghost. When all the time, you and your husband should know how to impart that to your kids. Now, you listen to me. Yes. Yes. History and math and science are not as important as being able to respond to the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Father, and I thank you for giving Margaret wisdom and insight and ability. Yes, Lord. To be able to minister to things of the Spirit. Yes, Lord. To where that there can be no resistance. Yes, Lord. I don't look at resistance. I don't look at, I don't, I don't believe in shyness. I don't believe in timidness. I don't believe in anything that would create resistance as some, to, to be classified as normal and accommodate it. The Lord puts a right and a correct and a proper disposition in our hearts so that we may be able to receive. Now, Gabriel, he's just really sensitive to the Lord. He's been the most sensitive of all of your children and to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And uh, just have him pray for Jaden. Yes. <laughs> have him start ministering Jaden more. He needs somebody to minister to. We're really, we're, we're praying about doing... A, a ten, ten, a ten week tent meeting this August on the Mission Training Center, because we're really considering launching a church. I just I've got to have everything right to launch it there properly. But we may just go ahead and just do the the meeting whether we launch the church or not. And uh, just. David, come up here, man. I'm concerned about you. Come here. Who's watching out for David? Who's taking care of David? Huh? Adam and you taking care of David? Are you guys getting in prayer meetings, touching heaven? Come up here, stand up here, David. Huh? No, we haven't. Well, you guys need to do that. You guys need to get into, to get into prayer meetings. Because the things of the Spirit are more important than things of academic, ac academics where you can touch heaven, and heaven can touch you. The Lord says this, and it's, in, and I hear it just ringing, because I, I feel, you know, many times the Lord prophesied through someone at different age groups, because it's really God sounding out something to that age group. And Angelica, you know, prophesying my spirit of the Lord, the Lord's saying, yield to me. I want to reveal myself to you. So one of the things David needs to learn is he needs to learn how to yield to the Lord. That's a department that you need to develop in a bit more too. And, in, and then you have more maturity here than both of your brethren here. And so you can help impart things to them. Do you understand this and what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. Okay. So... What is the next step that you need to take so that you're able to touch heaven in the realms of what we were talking about tonight in, in the service here to where you become so sensitive to the Holy Ghost? He carries you away. 
carries your emotions away. He becomes the master of your emotions. So when you think about, think about things that excite you, that, that make you really excited and happy and things that cause you to just be emotional. What are those things? And if you, if you look at them, you might find that it's a lot in the self realm. And you want the Holy Spirit to be able to move in with the Spirit of the Son and touch your emotions. Because He touches us in a way we cannot touch. He has access to something that we don't have access to. He touches, in a, touches us in a way that no earthly thing can touch us. And I want you to understand, David, that this is essential to moving with God in relationship in such a way that God can use you. Signs, wonders, and miracles, the preaching of His Word, the casting out of devils, the works and ministry of Jesus, but more unfortunately, just so that you personally get to interact with the Lord in realms called heaven. It's the realm of the Spirit. And tonight, in Jesus' name, I'm believing that a work of divine grace would take place in your life that your emotions, that your passions, that your attitudes become mastered by the Holy Ghost. Have you ever prayed in the Holy Ghost until the atmosphere of your life changed? Yeah. Do you feel the atmosphere change? Where there was maybe worry, there was peace, where there was maybe problems that became a manifest presence of Jesus? Well, that's good. Then you keep doing that. And let those things within your heart and your life become so yielded to the Lord that you become that person who loves Him so much that at the sound of praise, you become a praiser. Yeah. Yeah. At the sound of rejoicing, you become a joyer. Amen. This, the Lord's going to do this for you tonight. He's going to touch you, David. He's going to impart things to you tonight so you can respond more to Him. Because you want it. You want this. Father, thank you right now in Jesus' name. Deeper still. Deeper still. Right now, everything that would hinder you Everything that would try to hold you back. Every hurt, every problem, every thought, every issue. Now in Jesus' name, it's removed from off of you, moved out of the way. It's moved out of the way. So that now you can begin to praise Him and you can begin to rejoice and you can begin to leap and you can begin to shout. You begin to pour out your hearts affection, the riches of your emotions upon Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. For out of your belly should flow these rivers. Out of your belly should flow these rivers of expression. <laughs> right out of your belly should flow these rivers. Hallelujah. John Jolobokadai. Aramanda Esteparade, yeah. Rabasta Day, yeah, 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 yeah. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nothing quite like the joy. It hooks you up with every other part of the prayer moving of God. Ha la mong jekalana mamre day. Ha ha. Jerezi tu rinana. Mumba na mende eshefe yo. Yes. More. 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 Men angry. Man lange this day. Yeah, you folks just need to sit around in a meeting just get joy, get in the joy. Hallelujah. Come here, Adam. Lift your hands towards heaven. Out of your belly. 
אין להם בעיה שם. Somebody said, what's the big deal about joy? You get to, you find out the place of happy. That's exactly where the Holy Ghost is. Holy Ghost is not crying and sorrowful and sad. He's not. There's no dimension of him. He's not stoic. He's happy. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Hallelujah. I speak healing to your body right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, I speak healing to your spirit. The hurts and the brokenness in your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. You right now in the name of the living God. It's not going to cripple you. It's not going to paralyze you. But it's going to be a big place of room where, where Christ Jesus come rule over you. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in the Master Code and I. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lord of Star and Embry. Lord of Star and Ambritaka. Membre de Fe. Hallelujah. You know, I'm so blessed with what's happened to you, Lissy's just recently, men. God touched him and healed him and it was like, well, you, you had to be on medication since 2001, right? Ninety-eight? Huh? Ninety-three. And all those things are addictive. They're just totally addictive. And the big miracle is that you've not been having to take any of them because there's been no pain. And then the second big miracle is that you're not addicted to them. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Ulysses, we love you. And, you know, I, I think that one of the best Facebook pictures that I've got up in a long time is Jonathan out at the baptism last week. <laughs> Jonathan, never lose that man. That realm of heaven that is there for you, my dear friend. It will, uh, that beautiful thing that was happening to you right there on the beach. I mean, I am a witness that it gets stronger every day. You just stretch out those hands towards him. You say, oh, God, I'm so hungry for you. Your anointing's more important to me than life itself. Thy loving kindness, oh, God, is better than life. Hallelujah. It just increased more and more. Who's watching out for Jonathan? Angelo? If you don't have anybody watching out for you, walk around saying, I need somebody to watch out for me. I need somebody to pray with. Hallelujah. O cora mangesi bruta. Lo remanglish de brutano. Se breve carna mandale. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ibre baki da remembre bi carna mambre bar ming da brava sa remembre bre mambre bebe. Breme mambra man so breve gardi galvera da remembre bebe breme da brava sa brava. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this fire. I thank you for this fire on the inside of John. Father, let it burn with your glory. Let this fire burn with your presence. Father, make a fiery evangelist out of him. Oh, Lord, make a fiery evangelist with your anointing upon his life. Oh, God, that breaks up every stronghold. Father, I thank you for the passion that is in John for you. Your love, oh, God. My mom, Radenga, name Radaya that has been poured into his heart. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that likewise you raise up such zealous souls for you, O oh God. Father, people who are just given over, O oh God, for your glory, your divine purposes. Yes, Lord. 
Who's watching out for you? Your dad? <laughs> you need somebody else. Hook up with. Hallelujah. Everybody needs to get hooked up. Needs to get linked up. Need to get linked up. Out of your belly flows these rivers of the Holy Ghost. This wellspring of life from the Father. This anointing. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this anointing right here. In Gina's life, Father, I pray you use her. Use her, Father God, in a mighty way for your divine purpose and for your glory. What's up? Are you standing? <laughs> yeah. How many times a day do you believe that you should step into the j manifest joy of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> this is a quiz. All day. Oh. Woo. I'm talking to every one of you tonight. Right now. How many times a day do you believe that you should step into the manifest presence of the Lord that produces joy? How many times do you reckon? One, two. Well, let me just say this. If there are those here tonight that you don't practice one, start there. I don't want you to tell me how we ought to begin the joy all the time and then depress yourself and make it feel like, you know, my goodness, I'm so far from being, who knows, I might not even be saved. Start this one. Just Thank you, Father, for some of you right here. So, so, tomorrow, determine. You say, well, I'm just too busy. I'm too no, you're not. How many of you have a commute in your car? You'd be full of joy before you ever get to work. You might even actually need help out of your car. <laughs> just, pr just begin in the morning when you get in your car. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Till the joy comes. The joy comes. The tangible presence of the Lord will fill your house. Fill your car. You walk into your workplace. People, people experience the presence of Jesus through your life. Then after you've experienced one joy in the one joy of the day. Build up to two, and then find yourself just going from joy to joy. You must give yourself to these things. We must give ourselves to these things. We must be continually filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns, hymns and spiritual songs. We must build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping ourselves in the love of God. If we're going to walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit, if we're going to be developed and matured into the things that the Holy Ghost would teach us.
Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you lay such a burden and insight and a wisdom upon Angelica's heart for Katie that she'll be able to speak with your authority and with your voice into Katie's life. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you give such an anointing to Anaka, such an insight, such a revelation concerning the things that are going on in Charity's life that she can be a mouthpiece of help, a strength, blessing. The one thing we're going to do by the oven, the grace of God, is we're going to shut the back door, as it were. Amen. Yeah. We're, we, we're going to make sure that any way that Satan would try to come in and begin to kill and steal and destroy, he's not going to be able to. Amen. If there's anything, that, dear people, if there's anything we want to walk in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and discerning of spirits is about, it's right there in the practical application of watching out for one another's soul. Seeing what's going on, saying, look, you know what, we're going we're to turn this metal to the gate right now. We're going to break off this stronghold. Now, let me just say this to you. When I, many times, when the meeting starts, I can see, like tonight, there's some challenges tonight at the beginning of the meeting, to the meeting. Those challenges aren't here now. Because you, you, on Sunday morning, you leave out of here. I mean, the power of God was intense here this morning. The place was charged with the atmosphere, was charged with the presence of the Lord. You could, you could feel it in the parking lot. <laughs> and then what happens is, you know, you go home and you got all these things going on. You come back and you're tired, a little bit weary. But it's an important event. What's going on is an important event. The things the Father wants to accomplish, we'll break through every time. We'll, we'll, we'll come to this place in Jesus' name where everybody is able to receive what God wants to supply by His Spirit. Because without it, you're not going to be strengthened. That's why the Spirit of the Lord said, as you see the day approaching, assemble yourself all the more together. He didn't say, don't go to church as much. <laughs> he said, go, go to the meeting more. So you can be strengthened, so you can be encouraged, so you can be equipped to stand against the evil day. Don't, how do you stand against the evil day? Can anybody tell me? How do you stand against the evil day? Think, think, think. Be filled with the Spirit. Huh? Amen? I'm gonna, I, want to, I want to help a couple of you. When you feel like that you have pressures on you or whether they're financial or relationship pressures, you know how to deal with them? Total, with total abandonment, say, Lord, I care not for myself. I know you care for me in such a way I don't need any more help. I totally resign myself over to your care and keeping. You do that. You let the Lord take care of you. You just go to sleep. You rest. You don't have any problems. No matter what the threat is, if it's your life, your life's being threatened. Fine. Whatever. Lord, I'm, you're, I'm yours. I'm going to go sleep now because I know you're going to take care of me. I'm going to rest in you. You know, Jesus said to his disciples, can you watch with me for just one hour? Can you guys stay awake for one hour and pray with me? This is pretty intense here. You know what I'm getting ready to go through? Can I have a little help, please? And he comes back and he finds them sleeping and he goes, come on, kid, come on, just just a little prayer with me, will you? Pretty intense God saying to his disciples, please pray with me. Pretty intense, isn't it? Then when, it was, when the prayer was all finished, the battle was run. 
He said, sleep on. Rise up, let us go. Rest on now. It's done. We can rest. You can rest. He's got you. Turn your life completely over to him, and he's got you. Okay, turn, I said, turn your life completely over to him, and he's got you. I command you in Jesus' name, do not hold back anymore your life. Do not, do not hold your life back anymore from him. Don't hold you. Give it to him. No, give it to him. Give it him. Everything. Give your life to him. All your cares, all your aspirations, all your desires, all your wishes, all you want. Give it to him. Say, Lord, it's yours. I'm not going to be in charge anymore. Amen. Dear people, I want you to agree with us tonight. We need a miracle. We need a financial miracle. I know you need, I know many of you here tonight, you need a financial miracle as well. So I've got the plan that's given to me directly from the Lord to take care of the financial miracle. And he said that if you would sow and if you would give into the ministry, that, and you would do it cheerfully, not under obligation, but you would give to the ministry, to the church. And he says, he would cause all grace to abound unto you that you would have all sufficiency in all things. And he said, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But he said, if you sow generously, you're going to reap generously. And I'm just believing God that everybody's going to get a generous harvest tonight. You're going to hook up with us for a miracle. We're going to have a miracle offering. And you're going to have a miracle provision. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.